Hey everybody, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. In this video, I'm going to build a radio kit. Specifically, I'm going to build the QCX transceiver from QRP Labs. Now, this is a $49 CW-only radio, but it is fantastic. It comes with a list of features that are incredible for a $49 radio. You can't find another radio anywhere near this price that has these features. So if you're a Morse code person, this is a kit that you must build. Uh, and the, the features alone are just unbelievable. And what else is unbelievable is this uh, radio has the best in installation instructions, the best building instructions of any kit I've ever seen. Uh, you, it's just crazy good. Han Summers designed this radio last year. Uh, he sold over 4,000 of them already. He brought, I think, 400 of them to the Four Days in May event and the Dayton event here just recently and uh, probably sold out. I, I saw people buying multiple radios and there was always a crowd at his table. So um, anyway, I'm gonna build this thing. The first step to that is to get all the parts out and sort them and inventory them. Now what you get in this little box um, is this package that is the same for all bands. And then you get a separate little package that has the filters for the particular band you ordered. In this case, this is the 40 meter uh, version of this thing. So I'm going to get started, inventory all this stuff, and uh, then just kind of take you through this one step at a time. Okay, so I've been through the inventory process. Uh, there's a lot of parts to this thing, uh, but I've built bigger kits, so uh, it's not as bad as you think. Here's a couple of pages of parts, and I've checked them off as I, as I went. And I've got the parts laid out right here on the table. Um, I'll take a picture to show you what I do. When I build a kit, I typically take a few sheets of paper and I tape them down to the side of the table over here and then I will write uh, the name of the part or the value of the part uh, under here. Now it's important if you do it this way that you not bump the table and uh, it's important that you shut, keep the door shut so that your two lovable but curious cats don't jump up on the table while you're building this thing. Uh, it takes about eight hours. To build this so I'm going to start working on it and along the way I'll just take still photos to show you a time lapse of, of how it looks and then when I'm done we'll go through the alignment process and put it on the air so uh, here we go Okay, so I have built the radio now, and I'm happy to say that it's alive. It's alive! Now, I did make one mistake. Okay, I made two mistakes, really. The first mistake was staying up until 3 o'clock in the morning working on it. That led to the real mistake, which was uh, I put a part, I put a capacitor in a place where a resistor was supposed to go. And uh, I discovered that about 2 o'clock in the morning. It was at this moment that he knew. Up. And uh, when I discovered that, I had to desolder that capacitor and, and I broke it. When I was pulling it out, I broke one of the legs off of it. A lot of people don't realize that the smoke is pre-packaged inside the components. And of course, our job is to not let the smoke out. Well, the mistake that I made, if I had kept going without realizing what I'd done, I would have probably let the smoke out. But uh, fortunately, I caught it and got back on track. Um, the alignment process for this radio is drop dead simple. What it boils down to is you're going to take a little screwdriver, hopefully a, a plastic alignment tool, and you're just going to tweak four, four little screws. So I'm going to walk you through that and show you how easy that is. And then after that, we're ready to put this thing on the air. Okay, let's start the alignment process here. So I'm going to plug the radio in. And I'm going to get to the menu by just holding this button down for a second. And I'll use the encoder to go up to menu option number eight, which is alignment. And then I'll press the enter button again. Let's scroll over here till we get to the peak bandpass filter. That's what we're looking for. And at this point, it's telling us to press the select button to go into this mode. Now, the reason why is because it's going to inject a very, very loud 700 Hertz tone and you want to make sure to unplug your earbuds, uh, unplug your speaker if you're doing this at home because it does get very loud and it'll startle you. 
So uh, I'm going to press the select button. All right, and I am using a, uh, a screwdriver with a metal tip. It makes a tiny bit of difference here, but the, the alignment tools that I've got are not skinny enough to turn this knob very well. So I've made this video four times, uh, trying not to look like an idiot uh, with that screwdriver. And so far, uh, I'm, I'm over four. So what we're doing here is we're gonna try to peak this, this bar meter, this, uh, this bar, and notice how it says zero nine up here. If I turn this and the meter goes all the way to the right, it's gonna jump up to zero ten. If I go the other direction and it goes down too low, it'll go to 08. See how it changed numbers? And now 06. And our job here is to tweak this until we get this number as high as we can and then get the bar graph as high as we can. So here we go up to 8. And here we are at 09. Okay, now if I keep turning to the right, this starts dropping. Go back to the left, I reach a peak, and then it starts dropping again. So that's as good as I can get it right there. All right, so that's the first step, is to get the bandpass filter peaked. And we are done with that. So I'm gonna turn the encoder one time. And now we're gonna adjust this potentiometer right here to get the IQ balance set. And what we're trying to do here is we're looking at the other side of the carrier on the sideband side that we want to reject. And so we're trying to turn that down. And so our job here is to get this number as low as we can and then get the bar graph as low as we can. So I'm going to put my screwdriver in here and start tweaking. All right, so now I've got to number eight. That's good, it's going down. Oh, now it's going back up to nine. Let me come back down the other way. All right, here's eight. Now it's going back up to nine again. Okay, so in my case, I'm doing good if I can get into number eight and then shrink it to about, well, that's number nine here. Go back. Okay, I'm kind of at this weird place where it's jumping. All right, here's the eight. Still going down just a hair, oh, not coming back. Okay, that's as good as I can do for the IQ balance. We're gonna turn one more time. Now we're gonna go to the phase um, low shift here. And this is gonna use this potentiometer and then the high is gonna use this one. So now we're on low. Again, we're gonna to try to minimize this number and then the bar graph within that. So I'm gonna put the screwdriver in here and I'm going to tweak this. Okay, now, it's, now it's down to seven, that's good. Oh, now it's up to eight. So I'm trying to get as low as I can, there's seven. Now it's gonna go back up again to eight. Okay, so I know that, that when that number was in the, was seven, tweaking the bar graph for the lowest number I could is where I want to be on this one. Okay, good. That's it right there. Well, that's within a bar of the best I can do. So I'll stop while I'm ahead. All right, let's tweak this one more time. Now we're going to get the high one. We're going to use this potentiometer for that. So I'm going to select that. And again, we're looking for the lowest number we can. Okay, so at 0, 08, I want to get the lowest number I can and then make the bar graph as low. So here's 9, there's 8, and it's starting to go back up to 9 again. So let me decrease this. Okay, now I've done that. So what happens is all three of these last three potentiometers kind of interact with each other. So now that I've gotten all three as low as I can go, I'm going to go back and see if there's anything else I can do now that the three of those are tweaked. So here's eight, I wanna go as low as I can go. Okay, that's as good as I can do there. Let's go back up to the low phase shift. See if I can tweak that to go lower. And nope, not really. So here's the high phase shift. See if I can make that go any lower. Yeah, a little bit, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Okay, all right, so that's it. Now the radio is aligned and uh, we can just press this exit button twice to get back to the main, main radio. So the alignment part's done. Now I'm gonna show you how to use uh, the radio, just the basics of it. So let's put this thing on the air and I'll show you that. Okay, I'm gonna show you the basics of how to use this radio. I'm not gonna go into it in a lot of detail, but enough to get you going. There's a little splash screen that you just saw and now we're uh, sitting here ready to go. I've got the volume turned down. Let me turn it up. You can probably hear that through my microphone. 
for now, I'm gonna turn the volume down so we can just look at it. Um, this is the AF gain knob, so that's your volume control. Then there's three other buttons here. There's a small switch here, which is used to select things mainly. And then there's the rotary encoder that's used as kind of a uh, cycle through a menu, men, menu choices, I guess you'd say. And then there's a third button over here that's a momentary switch that uh, lets you exit mostly. So select, uh, move through selections, and then exit. That's kind of how you might want to think about it. So when the radio first comes up, it's set to default to whatever settings you've got configured. If you want to change the CW key or speed, you just press this left button. And now you can use the encoder to change uh, whatever speed you want to. And then just press the exit button to get back out of the menu and get back over uh, to the radio part. Uh, if you double click this left button, you know, if a single click gets you the uh, Morse code speed, double click will get you the RIT function. So here you can just set whatever you want the offset to be and then uh, press the left button again to make that choice. Uh, and you can see the RIT here in the window. If I double click this again to get back to RIT, I can just hit the right button to exit and it'll zero out the RIT. I could have just as easily you know, come back here and then change it back to zero. But pressing exit will get you out of this RIT mode. Okay, so um, to tune the radio, this rotary encoder is used and you can uh, press it, you know, there's a button built into this encoder, you can press it to swap between one kilohertz, 500 hertz, 100 hertz, or 10 hertz. So I'm gonna turn the volume up and we can tune around a little bit. So there's 100 hertz. Okay, so we're off frequency here. I'm gonna tell you what the side tone pitch is. Now, if I hit my key over here, it's gonna send live dots and dashes over the air, which is a no-no, right? I don't wanna do that. So instead, there's a kind of a trick. If you hold this first button for a long press, you'll get to the menu. And now, while you're in the menu mode where you can cycle through things, uh, as long as you're in the menu mode, you're not actually transmitting off the air. So I can just hold down this, the paddle. So that's the 700 hertz side tone pitch. So now that I've heard that in my head, I'll go back to here, shift to the 10 hertz. Okay, so now I'm, now I'm zero beated with that station. We'll go back to the menu for a second. See, it's very close, it's within 10 hertz. Okay, so that's how you can quickly zero beat just by holding this and going into the menu. Turn this down, talking over the top of it. Just by going back into the menu setting, you'll disable the transmission so you can generate some pitches for yourself. Okay, um, if you hold the decoder, you get into message mode, and I don't have any messages programmed in, but if I did, you could see them. There's 16 of them, or 12, I guess. 12 messages, and I can cycle through them. I don't have any defined. If I did, I could press the left button to make this loop repeatedly until I press the paddle, or I could press this or encoder button, the center button, and make it send that message one time, or I can just press the right button to exit, as uh, the, this is always the exit button, seems like, until it's not, and which is the case right now. So you know that a while ago, we're just pressing the left button, let's just change the Morse code speed. Well, if you press the right button, you're cycling between VFO A, VFO B, or split mode. See how that works? So here's A, here's B, and now we're in split mode. And if I want to swap these frequencies between A and B, I'll just hold this down for a long press. Okay, so now A and B's frequencies have been swapped. I'll do it, turn it back. So that's it. To go out of split mode, you just cycle back to the VFO A or, or B. So uh, there's one more thing here that's interesting, and that's this little micro switch. Right now I've got the, uh, well, let me, I'll show you. So if I go here to the preset, uh, the menu, go over here to keyer, press the left button to select some choices here. Uh, I've got the keyer right now set to, uh, where is it here? Keyer mode, iambic B. I can press the left button and then cycle through these choices to go to straight key mode. Okay, and there's actually, we have escaped to get out of here. There's actually a little straight key built in right here. Let me tune off frequency for a second. See that? How cool is that?
How neat is that? So I'm going to uh, get back out of here and set that back because I don't typically use a straight key. Mm, Keyer mode. Set that back to Ambic B is what I like. Okay. Let's work this guy. Kind of fading a little bit here on me. This is a contest where you give a serial number. I'm up to serial number five now. Okay, wasn't very graceful. I caught him on some low QSB and then I screwed up a little bit. Uh, anyway, I've made five, five contacts, um, filmed a couple earlier. But uh, anyway, the radio works great and I'm very happy with it. There's so many different things you can do with this radio. Uh, so many ways to configure it and uh, it's pretty much just uh, awesome. Okay, to wrap this up. This is a QCX transceiver. It's $49 from QRP Labs. Uh, it is a great little radio. It's got LCD screen, digital synthesized VFO, two VFOs, uh, messages, frequency memories, uh, all the test equipment built in. Uh, it's just a great little radio. And for 50 bucks, come on, how can you beat that, right? So uh, grab one. And uh, get your soldering iron heated up and uh, go for it. You're going to love this little rig, I promise you. And with that, I'll wrap it up. This is N4CCB.